Hey, Ping Bane, what's up, man? What's going on? I'm feeling a little bit shiny. So last night I went out, me and Rainbow Bright got a fuck on. Apparently we were making love on top of all this glitter and rainbows and Skittles. And this is what I was left with, this shirt. I didn't take a shower this morning, so this is just, okay. What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes just to say I'm be doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. We know my experiences with Vandy Vape. This is gonna be fun. This is. I'm looking forward to this because I haven't vaped on a Tootsie Roll ever. Because that's exactly what this looks like. I don't want to ruin it. I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. First off, when I read the label of this, I said there is no fucking way that Vandy Vape is naming their kit the polio kit. I know that that's some type of disorder. Like, I, I know that's what it is. And then I flipped it over and I read Apollo kit and I said, okay, so not only are they not naming it after disease, they're naming it after a crashed fucking space endeavor voyage thing. I get it. Other Apollos made it. This one didn't. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie to me. I saw the fun of this. I said, okay, this is going to be nice. This is going to be a 21700, super compact, feel really good. It's not till I open it up and I felt the mod where I was like, okay, this is not going to work. Like, th there's no possible way that that has a built-in battery. Like, it, it feels legitimately like I'm holding a Lincoln Log. Most of you younger crowd is not gonna know what a Lincoln Log is. That basically what it is, you bought a bunch of logs, right? And then you made a house out of it. And on the ends of the logs were little cutouts. And then you would, oh my God, they were so much fun. So what we're gonna be going over today is the Lincoln Log of vape boxes. I don't know what the fuck Vanny Vape is doing. Like, I literally, have no idea. It's like they get up and then they're like, well, today, let's make a mod out of a piece of celery and Q-tips. Let's do that. Hey, Sunshine Lou and Kevin, come on over here. Make a fucking mod out of this piece of plastic and toilet paper. <laughs> who, who on the design team got Vanny Vape most fucking hate me? <laughs> I hope one day I see him at an expo so I can just give him a hug. Cause you know they need love. You you just know it, right? Like you you know it. Unless of course you look at it like Tony B made them all this money making all the pulses. So Vanny Vape is straight. They don't need to do anything else. Just because Tony B makes a new product every 48 hours. <laughs> I can just imagine what is going through their mind when they see J.A.'s Vandy Vape. This motherfucker. Hey Steve, we're closing early today. Maybe I'm giving myself too much credit, I don't know. And, and I don't want to ruin it right now because I'm gonna bring it down, show you everything inside of the box, how this thing works. This is going to function a lot like the original K-Box. For anybody that doesn't know what that is, it was essentially a box mod that took an 18650 by Kanger Tech. Very, very compact for what it was. And it was adjustable, but it was in weird increments. Meaning you had like 8, 15, or 8, 12, 15, 20, 35, and 40. And then you would press the button to adjust the power accordingly. It was very, very... I don't want to say inaccurate, inconsistent would be the better word. And people bought it because it was super cool. And I feel like people are going to buy this not knowing the size of what is inside this box. Even the box itself makes the mod look large. It's about to go down. Let's flip it. Polio isn't what I thought it was. Apparently polio is from a very dirty country. And it doesn't really have much to do with the mod considering it's got nothing to do with polio. All right, so what we got on the top is a polo kit. Got some little bulleted information, waterproof, dustproof, and shockproof. And I'm going to test all of those. Well, not so much on this one because I really don't care whether it's waterproof. What's important to note is a lot of people look for these inside of a mod just because there's really not a whole lot out there. The only thing I could really think of is the Geek Vape Aegis, the Aegis Mini, and then you have the Duel. There was also a company back in the day, Davpo made the ELVT and the ELVT Mini, which was essentially 
like this, but used an 18650. And it was very, very popular amongst people that had a very rigorous job. So I'm assuming that's what their take is on doing this. Then down on the bottom, Vanny Vape, full steam ahead, and you can see that they did change the packaging on the last couple products, but the old one was just blue, had a window, and then the same bulleted information on the back side. On the top of the box, nothing. Bottom, nothing. On the side, it's gonna be a diagram of the device and the kit. Sticker on the top. On the other side, batch number and a UPC, QR on the top, and then a scratch and sniff is going to be watermelon, rubber band, flavor and scented. On the back of the box, two more bulleted pieces of information and the contact information for the company. Made in China, and then this is the device, and it does come with a tank that goes on the top of this. If you don't like the tank that goes on this, you can use other things, but this thing is extremely tiny. This picture is doing it no justice whatsoever. I am going to try this tank out, however, the resistance and the way that they're mouth to lung, I'm not very much interested in it, but we're here for the whole kit. So, inside the box, here we go. We have the tank, we'll go over that shortly. The mod, an extra glass for the tank in case if you do break the one that's on there. On the bottom of the box, you're gonna get a user manual on how to operate the box mod. Then you get a warranty. You also get an accessory box, which is what you're going to need if you wanna change out the coils, or if you, that is a weird place to put that. They put a silica gel packet in the accessory box. Usually that's sitting on the top to keep the moisture out, but that's weird. Inside your profile pouch, you're going to get some extra O-rings and then some type of tool, which I'm not quite sure what that's for, but I'm sure I will figure that out very shortly. You get two extra coils, a 1.5 and a 1.8 ohms. Then a USB, which you are going to need to update the firmware and, in fact, charge this. There is no way to take the batteries out of this by default. So there's not really much on the instruction, just really how to turn it on and adjust it. You'll see that this does have a 900 milliamp per hour, and again, the size of this it almost seems like that's accurate just because other devices that are much much smaller say that they have that kind of MH however they do not this is the tank that it comes with and looking down here on the bottom for your airflow inlet it is extremely tiny I'm not able to get this drip tip out just because of how tight it is in there I mean I could use a tool like I'm about ready to do right now to get underneath that to really pry it up it does appear to be a 510 connection what the fuck is that? Yo, like, shut up. We were going so fucking good. I don't know what that is. I don't think that's VG because it has no scent or taste to it whatsoever. I know that there's gonna be people that are gonna say, you know, listen, Jay, the situation is, is that Vandy Vape sent this to you like that. Vandy Vape had no way of knowing that I was gonna get this device from this company, so there's no way. I think what happens is a lot of people don't really inspect things the way that I do. So you're very less likely to see other people have a lot of the problems I do, unless of course they do a lot of the things I do, and a lot of the times your viewers will essentially do the right thing and clean it up, but I, I can't. I, I can't leave this out because this is important. I am not going to use this. I, I know I could clean it up, but there's something about getting a tank out of China that's filthy like that, that I think we were past. I didn't think that that was a thing anymore. On the outside of this looks really, really good. I don't see any dings, dents, burrs, spurs, cowboy boots. Again, it is black, so it is a little bit harder to see if there is any flaws. And then on the inside there for the actual coil is going to sit right there and then screw in. Okay, you can open up that airflow a little bit so it's not as restrictive as what it was when I took it out of the box. That's not using that, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm very let down by that. This thing is very, very lightweight. It almost feels like it would break if you did drop in it. And it almost feels like there is 
nothing on the inside of this. Extremely lightweight. And I really, really thoroughly enjoy that. What I don't enjoy is the way that this looks. But I get it. They're, they're trying to keep the whole scheme of things. You start adding stainless steel buttons. It doesn't have quite the same look to it as it does right now. It almost feels like an 18650 belongs in there. It looks very, very difficult to even disassemble. You'll probably have to take these two torques out here, pop it up, and then, I mean, it's seamless. So let me show you how this works. It's very, very simple. You can see it's on right now. That's the battery life. It only goes up to 4.0 volts, which kind of confuses me because on a 1.5 resistance at 4 volts is not going to provide anything that's even remotely good. With higher resistances, you need more volts. This is really designed for something like a 0.2 or a 0.3, and it doesn't even output 4.2 volts. 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.8, and 4.0. Uh, let me give you a really good reference. This right here is a very high resistance coil. We have 0.89, 34 watts. See how that's 5.4? You have your fire button here, up and down right there, and then a USB down there to charge it. One, two, three, four, five is gonna shut it off. It's gonna blink. And now it is off, one, two, three, four, five. Turns on. To adjust the power, go up and down, you just hit the button. Very, very nice clickiness to this. But this thing feels very, very cheap. I wanted to try this out with a different device to really see how quick it ramps up. Now this is a .35 on here. When I hit this, it does nothing, it just blinks. It has a very awkward cap to it. So once again, that is the Apollo by Vandy Vape. Let's bring it on the top. All right, so here we are, back on top with the Tootsie Roll by Vandy Vape. Now, the only reason why I'm not using the tank on the top of this is because of the condition it was in. On top of that, you know, it being a mouth to lung and the resistance, I, I just don't feel like that would be a pleasurable experience. So, what I have here is a 0.57 sitting on the top of this. This is at four volts. Let me show you some vapor production, even though it doesn't really have anything to do with this. We're talking about more about the indestructibleness of this actual device. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like this will stand the test of time. You have to hold it down for a while. I think Vandy Vape should have took whatever chip that they have inside of this and made it that much better or that much more powerful. And if they had to extend this another two more millimeters on the top and a more two millimeters around the diameter, it would have been that much better because you would have been able to put your own battery inside of this. Typically what happens with LiPo devices, especially something like this that's very cheaply made, micro USBs in due time will no longer be able to stay in and you're gonna wear that down. Also, the battery itself is not swappable in this. So if later on down the road, let's just say you got 400 charges on this, it's not holding a charge anymore, you have to go buy another one. And that's one of the main reasons why I prefer something that has an external battery. I don't know the market that they were targeting. If they were gonna make a four volt cutoff, which is not enough of power to really run anything unless it's like a 0.2 or 0.3 build, even at that, this won't fire it for safety reasons. So you're stuck with what you have or rebuilding or learning how to build the higher resistance to enjoy this. And that's assuming that you're going to enjoy it at four volts. Pick up any device you have right now, set it to four volts, fire it, let me know if that's good. And then on top of that, let me know the resistance. I'm serious, put that in the comments because I wanna know how many people are out there that are actually using only four volts. Mm, it's legitimately not enough of power. A device like this I would never use, just primarily because of what it is. If this had a five volt cutoff and a single 18650, I would probably rate this an eight to an 8.5. But considering that it has a very, very high resistance cutoff, it being a built-in battery is gonna bring this down. And then ask yourself the question of whether or not you would enjoy something that's higher resistance only at four volts. Something else they should have done is make the glass that is on this not glass. You're making a mod that's somewhat indestructible, then you have a tank on the top that has regular glass. If you'd have went with polycarbonate, or PMMA would have snapped, it would be more reluctant to take the hit better than what glass would. You drop this on the tank once, it's literally going to shatter. 
and then you have nothing. It's not a terrible device, it's just nothing that I would recommend anybody to go get. There's a lot of other starter kits that are out there that provide much more power this and use single 18650s. This nothing man so they're labeling this as a starter kit the only thing you really need to do is get juice to put inside of the tank and then obviously it'll work so it is essentially a kit out of the box good to go the only reason why i can't recommend this is not only is it not going to provide enough of power for the coils that it comes with it's also not going to be good on anything else you're going to put on top of this i feel the k box is more powerful than what this is so what we're going to do real quick i'm going to take this outside i'm going to drop it from practical things i'm going to throw it a couple times see if it still works and it's good to go. It's a built-in battery though. Do I really want to throw this around? I'm not going to sit there like I did on the Aegis and dip it in the water and do all this crazy shit. <laughs> so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to go outside. I'm going to see that if you drop this from what you typically would drop any mod from, waist height, if it still works. Then of course I'll probably throw it up in the air and maybe against the wall. But keep in mind, I do not recommend you to try this with anything with a built-in battery or a mod with a battery on the inside. Play it safe. All right, here we go. So what we're going to be doing is going outside with this. Nothing too crazy. Just, you know, trying to figure it out. You can hear that it bounces a lot. So go ahead. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Want chili? No. So typical, typical. Okay. damage whatsoever it's still lighting up still works let's go inside I don't think it'll work anymore. Nice. Oh my God. No way. What? Um, but I, I don't know why you're throwing something that hard, uh, but you see it's still lit up, so the battery is still connected, but you got this weird, wait, so it is what it is. It's not a terrible device. Uh, I know there's snow on the ground, but it's really not that cold. My nipples are like this by default. They're just naturally pointy. Right here. There it is. All right, so if you want something that you could kick the shit out of and work, I still wouldn't recommend this. It's not enough for power. Thanks for watching. I've kept it real. Have you?